Hey there, my name is Milan Singh and I'm the host of Spy Fi After Dark. I'd like to take a moment to thank you for listening to this episode and to ask that if you enjoy the show, consider rating or subscribing on whatever platform you're listening on. That's all for me. Now on to the episode. I'm here today to record a special intro for this episode because this is the season finale for season one of Spy Fi After Dark. It's been a great season, a total of 10 episodes, some really good ones, some great moments, um, and it's been thoroughly creatively satisfying for me as I've been looking for a project like this to add to my life. We'll be taking a three-week break, returning on December 9th with episode one of season two. We hope to deliver even more quality content in season two with new guests you haven't heard from in season one and a few favorites coming back. And if you'd like to be notified when season two comes out, you can find me on Twitter at Millen Tweets or on Instagram at Millen Grams. That's all for me. Now on to the episode. You're listening to the Spy Fi After Dark podcast. All right. Welcome back to Spy Fi After Dark. This is going to be episode 10, the season finale. Um, I'm here today with Chris again. Say hello. Hello, everyone. Chris being a escape room designer from the Valley. Been doing that for a, a while. Yeah. <laughs> and just all around, totally fair. all around creative media savvy kind of, kind of person. We were going to have Alex today, but, uh, you know, he's doing Alex things. To to be fair, it is it is midnight. It is this late. Is the it late is, night it edition. Is actually, after, after dark. dark. <laughs> um, which th- I don't know if this is a first. Or I think it's a, s- a second time. It's well, been actually after dark. The last Maybe time it was time. after dark for me as well. Was it? Well, look, it's fall and the days are short. <laughs> <So, laughs> it was like starting like at 3 six. p.m. Was, no, not even. Wait, was it six? Was it really? It was in the afternoon. Yeah, I didn't leave until like later in the night. I think you left around six. I think we started at like three. Because mm. you even made a comment about it not being after dark yet in the episode. That's fair. I did. I did go out after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this might be the first one. Yeah. Well, well Alex just got back from a work trip today and yeah, he overbooked he himself. Yuma. Which is one of his life True. goals. He did do that for the third time. Yeah, he, he's like reliving his like favorite movies or something like that. <laughs> so, so he is not with us because he had to get back into the swing of things. Because he's weak. Well, we were we were actually texting about. Um, Every time it comes up, we just throw it in each other's faces. Um, oh, there's a new gene related to uh, like super sleepers or people who <laughs> don't need this yeah. or that amount of sleep or conditions. Realistically, I should have just said we shouldn't do this day. We should do it tomorrow. But oh, I was surprised, but I was, I'm was i always down. <laughs> but I was optimistic. <laughs> I was like, well, maybe it'll actually happen. Eh, oh, well. That's fine, though. We can do this one on our own. Today, we're going to be doing movie pitches oh but to be clear if he shows up during the episode he's just gonna have to oh, sit sure. and watch no he's, he's not allowed to get on a microphone <laughs> <laughs> this was too much of an effort to put together <laughs> you'll just hear you'll oh just hear God. that laugh track in the background oh no yeah just in the <laughs> <laughs> oh man that would be pretty good Oh jeez! You know, I, I didn't know it was happening, but he he listened to my episode, and so yeah, he's, he just, did. he's just texting me like in real time his reactions, and I just I couldn't figure out what was happening until it was over. <laughs> yeah, he he really enjoyed that episode. <laughs> I I will go back and listen to it eventually, but I apparently I I heard I went back and listened to everything up to that because it wasn't published yet. Yeah. So. I mean, a whole a whole chunk of that episode is basically aimed at Alex. <laughs> yes. Like it's pretty That's much fair. like thirty minutes of that podcast was basically produced for him. 
like as the sole I mean, these consumer. These are facts. These are facts. Have you, what have you figured out? What your uh, like download download statistics are like around the world? Or at least yeah. Platforms. Services. Yeah, I can uh, pull that up here. Go to my dashboard on Anchor. This oh. doesn't include YouTube. Sure. Oh, okay. it's just all the other platforms. But there's not a, not a whole lot of views on YouTube. Yeah, that was always one of the more exciting things. Like when someone published a game, you'd go back and you look at the like statistics. Yeah. So we're recording this um, towards the end of October. This is actually we're actually recording. Or a week out from Halloween. Yes, we're a week in chain. We eight days away from Halloween. It'll be seven by the time we finish this. Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will be. Um, but this is we're actually recording this. I think three weeks in advance. Oh, okay. Okay. Because episode eight will be on Tuesday, nine the Tuesday after that, or so I guess two two and a half weeks in advance. Because this will be ten. Oh, okay. Um. So as of right now, with episode seven just being released a few days ago, we're at two hundred eighteen plays on all the platforms except YouTube. So so six would have been Alex again, and then yes. seven is. Seven is Frank. Frank. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and then as far as like nationalities go, 91% United States. I mean, 5% you know, UK. So. Oh, yeah. Which is interesting. Do you have any idea who that might be? I have no clue. That's not you like VPNing? Nope. Okay. And then 1% Japan. <laughs> what? <laughs> 1% Germany. And one percent France 1% and one percent Lebanon. So I don't know who those people are, but I have ideas for all of those. But the hold on, <laughs> the, wait, who, who are you? Right? Oh wait, um, Freya, is she in Germany? She in Germ? Yeah, I think she was in maybe not town, but she might have been in Colorado or something in the last month. Okay, for the audience's reference, Freya is a mutual friend. Free is a wonderful human being. Yeah, she's great. Uh, she has been working in Europe at research labs, right? Um, finishing her PhD. Is she done? Uh, unclear. Okay. I mean, not not unclear to like the world. I just I don't really keep We're, track of. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be too surprising because, um, well, she's smart. Yeah, and I first heard about her moving like two years ago at this point. Yeah, it was it was two years ago. So just like it's a right around the right time, timing wise. And then uh, as uh, far as the I platforms wanna, I go, I want to plug her TED Talk. <laughs> oh, she's a TED Talk for real. Some, something like that. It was. It wasn't like it's not recent. I don't think it was a while ago, but I remember it. It happened, and and I'm calling myself out for being aware of it, but not listening to let me it. see it. let I'm me sorry. see if i can emergency google it yeah this sh- this should be viable There's something about how do you I spell it was, i think it was meat how do you spell her last name uh m-a-h-t-i-a well i guess at this point she is a public figure um m-e-h-t-a Well, I don't know why I said TED Talk. It was it was definitely like for a conference or something like that. But she has a, she got a video. She did the thing. Oh, I might have found something. This is 15 by 4 knowledge. Does that sound familiar? Uh, I mean, maybe. This is 15 minutes about cultured meat. That's Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> okay. It's got uh, 162 views on YouTube. Hey. It's published September this year. It's actually oh, this year? Far. September twenty okay. fifth, like a month ago. Oh, right on, right on. Uh, it says fifteen minutes about cultured meat, but the video is twenty three minutes long. So oh, do I you don't think she got like that. she might have got an intro? Oh, that's exciting. That might be really loud. That was yeah. I mean, I'm I'm fine, but <laughs> <laughs> did is the audience? That's loud that? for us, but I'm not sure. You're gonna how have loud to that bring that down. comes through. You're gonna have to bring that down. I hope honestly, I like I love her, but I hope she hasn't been listening to these. <laughs> Oh shit! No, I won't play <clears throat> any of it, but um, 
but yeah. We'll include a link in the description. Sure. And, I can. and if it spikes, um, that'll be exciting. Again, what was the viewership count? 162. Okay, and we'll check back. If it goes up we'll by check like back at the end 20. of next season. Yeah, <laughs> at the end of next season. Yeah, we have to come back retroactively like a year later. See if anyone went through the backlog. It's oh, my wild. God. Uh, it's like funny. that university is going to be looking at their backlinks going like, what, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> and then, so then to circle back, as far as the platforms go, at least by anchor, oh, of course, 54% of it's Spotify, 24% of it's Apple, 16% anchor and the rest is other stuff. So is that, is that like the goal or are those the values you want to be hitting? I, I don't really know don't what know values either. I want to be yeah, getting, to be uh, honest. When we get to this point in the production, I have no idea what the ideals are. And realistically, at the numbers we're talking about, we're not even close to statistical significance. No, of course. So these numbers could wildly change from 200 views to 1,000 or 2,000. Like They could wildly how, mutate. How is the audience growing primarily at this point? Like You are sharing these on... It's mostly Facebook, just me, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll get the email alert that. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Tagged in something. So, so this being the season finale, we're gonna have a short break oh, geez, after this. Finale. Okay. Um, I think two or three weeks. On I haven't decided yet. On... For the list on the listeners end. Okay. Yeah. Um, in that time, since I'm trying to like keep this in my head, like chronologically, this will be after episode eight which i'm going to record with alex this week um and that will be <laughs> okay that will be a meta episode about the changes about that we're Freya? making oh okay no. hey. <laughs> <laughs> um wait hold, hold on what if, what if we could pull her away not like physically but like get her on a mic and be like hey it's been two years <laughs> what is your life like oh yeah would you do that no she'd be awesome i'd love she, to talk yeah, to her no, yeah if she happens to find herself in arizona no no just like straight up all i'd like to do an awful skype recording oh, no, dude <laughs> uh that's a, that's a one boundary I'm, I'm not willing to cross at least right now is virtual it just doesn't play the same sure this is this is so much like easier it's not just easy it just comes across better like I've watched a number of podcasts with virtual interview versus in person. Like the difference is astounding. Oh, of course, of course. But uh, yeah, as far as viewership goes, Alex has got a number of plays at this point. We're well, at thirty-three. Okay. okay, what if what if she had a setup? That I wouldn't even put it past her. <laughs> it's not. It's really not even about the quality of the audio setup. It's more about the latency of the conversation. Do you think it would be that bad? It's just. It's just the EU. It's notice. I don't know. This is noticeable. <laughs> Whenever I've seen it done, it's always been noticeable. Okay. People talk over each other a lot more. Oh, of course. The yeah. Food. Even with only like a hundred millisecond delay, that's not like much, but it's enough to really make a pretty yeah, big difference. Frames. Yeah, I feel it. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So yeah, this will be the season finale, and then when we come back, um, we'll have other stuff lined up. Uh, I want to get an official Twitter, Instagram, various social you pages. Haven't, you haven't done that yet? I have a Twitter handle. Right okay, thank you. Um, at SpyFi official. Oh, you had to? Yeah. At SpyFi is taken. I mean, has it been? Or wait, sorry. It's years? at official SpyFi. My bad. Well, okay, well, we're plugging that now. But has, has SpyFi been active in the last two and a half years? No. All right, well. In a season, we're gonna take it. Yeah, no. At some <laughs> at some point, when when I have a website up, and emails branded to the domain, I will absolutely contact Twitter and get that. Uh, I was I was scrolling through my Twitter, and then I I mean, this has to have happened a while ago, but my friend's Twitter was verified, and I only just noticed it. You have a friend with a verified Twitter? I mean, I have I have several, but like, um, who are they? Uh, well, the this one in particular. And how do we get them on the podcast? You know what? He might be down. I think he's on his like third podcast at this point in town. Like his third? Yeah. As in he's done three episodes or as in he no, has pr- no, created like his, three different his podcasts? First, his first one, I still love it. I'll go, if I could go back and try to get on it, I would. Um, 
is wholly inappropriate for like anything that's gonna come up here now. And I don't know what his current one is about. I just know that he has a co-host. Um, and I think ironically, their graphic includes like American symbolism. <laughs> okay. What do they talk about on it? On the new one, I have no idea. Do you know what it's called? No, I'd have to find it again. Do you know the guy's name? I can Google him. Hold on, hold on. Or you can Google him. Yeah, I'll find it. Yeah, so when we come back, um, the whole idea is we're going to take, we're going to take some time to line up some guests, sort of get a good solid footing off the ground and start pulling in more diverse guests. Like this first round, this first experimental season, if you will, is mostly just close friends because we're trying to get the cadence down and uh, and just you know learn how to do this in the first place because it is a new thing. This is a new thing, yeah. Um, but I think because now Alex is coming on board, he's going to help me out at, on a creative level and take some of that off my shoulders. And he's just he's a very good creative bouncing board. Is this the episode where you're announcing that? Or no, that episode eight is. So this will yeah. is that even retroactive. Okay. Okay. We can um, talk about it. So, uh, so yeah, we'll be sort of launching properly, and then I think we may update the graphics a little bit and and whatnot. I lost the old graphics because they were on <laughs> a hard drive. <laughs> oh, on on that hard drive. Yeah, your your new um, I graphics can, should just be like like trashing the old hard drive. <laughs> I know, right? Um, I can probably recover the data from it. I just haven't got around to it. I recreated what I needed to. Like I'm still using the old graphics because they were already uploaded everywhere, and I oh, downloaded the the main square profile picture one, so I still have that. What did you What did you do it in? Is it like a vector file? After Effects. After Effects. Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I forgot who I was talking to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy who's more comfortable with After Effects than Photoshop. No, that's fair. I'll, and especially I'll, I'll in Photoshop for really stupid things. <laughs> I should just do an Illustrator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like I created a whole new video, uh, video template in After Effects, which actually looks really good. I think it's way better. The first one wasn't even really a template. I'll pull it up real quick just so you can see it. But uh, it looks really clean. It looks really good. So we'll we'll fashion graphics based on based on that. Eh, oh yeah, it's right there. Around. I can't tell. Here. So so what inspired the name? I never got around to asking. We we touched on it really briefly, but I can get into it a little bit further. So SpyFi is going to be a larger thing. Um. I don't I haven't even fully defined it yet. Still kind of working on that part. Um, but I know it will include my creative endeavors, which includes of course this podcast, but also uh, apps that I may build. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm already outlining it. Your media empire. Films, just... movies, short films, yeah. web series, games, you know, mm-hmm, whatever I end up doing. Okay. So it will encompass all of that. And so this After Dark is just the podcast. Oh. Uh, and yeah. it's kind of, it's kind of, ba- I I would say it's kind of backwards to a podcast first. Well, how? Why, why does that seem backwards to you? Because po- this is, well, this is how I see it anyway. Podcasts are really ways to double down on an existing audience. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> like, I think that's the, that's, as far as I've seen anyway, that's the most effective way to do it. You have an audience going into it, and this is a way to double down on your existing audience, those who are really into you, because they're going to be willing to listen to an hour-long podcast or two-hour-long podcast because they're fair. already really into yeah. you. Now, as so far doing as building it, this audience, do you do you feel you're going to have to go down the line of like 11-minute YouTube videos? <laughs> that's a possibility. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually am thinking about that. Um, some kind of a almost like a vlogging-type setup. Yeah, and an Instagram with scheduled posts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see about the Instagram <clears throat> thing. That's um, that's a whole new world to me. Um, you, do you mean like the visual realm? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, in a lot of senses, 
I don't have an Instagram at this moment. What? Yeah. Is that is that real? It's real. I we, really don't. We have like one. made Frank. Well, for we were on his ass for years, but like he didn't make his Instagram until the night before <laughs> the, the recording of the first episode. Oh wow! Did you were you aware of that? I did not know that. Yikes! Yeah. Okay. Well, well maybe uh, maybe Frank should be your Instagram. <laughs> I know, right? I am gonna make one. I just have. How do you? How do you not have it? I mean, at least you got the. At least you explored the Twitter. Just Facebook and Twitter. The, I'm yeah. honestly mostly Reddit, but does that really count? Sure. Most of my social media is Reddit, like ninety percent. That's fair. So, so what is the? Well, maybe eighty percent. Then you're able to get. Okay, hold on. Let me break it down. Fire. It's going to be like seventy-five percent Reddit, like seventeen point five percent Facebook, and seven point five percent Twitter. Fine. <laughs> Um, but yes, I, wait, what were you saying? I have a Twitter username for SpyFi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll have to find an Instagram one. And then a Facebook one, ideally. But you had, you got the Reddit as well? I know. Mm, yeah. Well, you know, figure out what sticks or get all of them and then. The thing, I don't want to, so the, I'll probably go through and get all of them. Be sometime between us recording this and this actually going live. Um. But I won't necessarily use them. There are people in my life who would, would like me to remind you to have backup accounts for all of these. <laughs> backup accounts? Yeah. <laughs> how, do, how does that work? Well, so, you know, you just maintain both, but you, for the sake of things, you just leave the backup one private until you lose the first one for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> until you lose it. Look. Anticipate you, it only you takes, will definitely It only lose takes it. so many bots and <laughs> one troll. To shut you off of a platform. Uh, seriously? That's yeah, kind of depressing. Real. Well. <sighs> That's why you got to get verified. <laughs> I know, right? I wonder I wonder what it would take to get verified. It's on my like bucket list of things to do is to be verified. Sure, yeah. Because like, who doesn't want to be and verified? And if I can piggyback onto that, <laughs> yeah, I'm no, going right? to. <laughs> I'm just going to have to be like spy lift up all Chris. of my friends. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're all like official spy fi members and they all get accredited. Spy fi Alex, spy yeah. fi Frank, <laughs> you slash spy fi Melon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, that's all going to happen at some point here. Um, Yeah. We're, we're it, working on it. It feels like a season finale. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The other thing is um, I started doing uh, clips for the past couple episodes that had gone up. So like for how, episodes how six long and seven. Clip? Like two to five minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Roughly. Um, and so those are... I did it for six and seven. And we'll continue to do it moving forward. So those... Uh, that's a part of the promotion strategy, if you will. And these clips would be uploaded onto what? Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. All the things. Yeah. Um, caption them. Is I can tell yeah. You. Shit. I mean, look, That's I'll, a good I'll, point. I'll do it. I, like, I'll volunteer myself. But like, real <laughs> thing, you need to caption your stuff. Yeah. That's, um, I'm surprised I didn't think of that. Yeah. Well, you don't have to deal with it. <laughs> That's a, yeah. Jeez. Especially if it's going on Facebook. Because then it's going to play invisibly. Right. Right. And there is the moving waveform, but like that doesn't indicate anything. Sure. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm going to have to look into that. Is that just literally manually? Oh, yeah. Don't run it through a thing, especially with multiple voices at the helm. That's just, that's bad. Oh, God. We're not there yet. It sounds time-consuming as shit. I mean, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I guess. I'll take you up on it if you want to. Uh, uh, I did like committing to that before it becomes like three episodes a day. <laughs> yeah. Multiple shows. Oh, Jesus, no. Yeah, we'll see. I, I do want to... I do want to do other shows in the future. I don't really want to give any of it away, but um, 
but I do want to do, I want to do something with Frank. Like, what do you mean? He, he, there's so much untapped potential in Frank. I think with his vast knowledge, are we going to produce 30% of this episode for Frank? <laughs> Cause I'm down. I mean, maybe not 30%, maybe like 10% after post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. After post. Just cut out most of it. No, but he, I mean, his, I mean, there's a reason that I want, that I brought him on first, you know, and then third and then seventh. Because he's has a fear of not prime numbers. What is happening? <laughs> is that how you actually, hold on. No, no, no. Cause you had a complete coincidence. Oh, that, no, no. So I, I understand. Cause you're five. I, I read, read, I, I listened to, um, their episodes back to back one and three yeah, yeah this is why i'm confused about how everything was paced and then i went back to uh john and Corey's episodes after oh, okay yeah but he i mean he's got so much um so much knowledge in that noggin you know i feel like he needs he needs a brand i have not heard the last episode the last episode with him is up is that correct yeah it's a little. It's a little more broad, so we do some certainly some Marvel. Well, that's the DC, first solo, but, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So what you're just you're just hitting film franchises? Pretty also? much. Oh, that's literally like what happened. <laughs> Was that like, by? That's very accurate. Did you plan on that going in? <laughs> Not exactly. It's just kind of how it turned out. But that that thing, the part from the middle that I showed you earlier, we're talking about the Karate Kid, right? The like the real Karate Kid. Or the, or the Karate Kid. The Just the way your face one. reacts to me saying that. <laughs> oh, no. When I you say the real Karate Kid, I have to go back and, and, read, and read and listen to all of that then. When you say the, the <clears throat> real Karate Kid. Um, well, uh, there's the, you know, there's the Russo Morita um, 80, 80s Karate Kid. Uh -huh. And then there's the Jaden Smith and... Jackie Chan. What year was that? 20, 2010. 10? Yeah, that sounds right. Jeez, that was a young Jaden. Yeah. Can you pull the mic a little closer to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, the... Well, we talked about both briefly, but it's really more Have of a brief comparison. Have you even seen the yeah, <laughs> original? I actually have. Yeah. Okay, what about the next two? No. And, and you, also, you also didn't see the Million Dollar Baby one. What's your name? God. No. Freedom Riders, uh, Swank, Hillary Swank. You didn't see the next Karate Kid? No. Uh, also, Pat Morita. That is a film franchise. <laughs> yeah. Well, all, all I know is that 2010 Karate Kid is is a good movie. I I would hope so. I haven't Have seen. I've seen only it? seen twenty minutes of the film. You're kidding me. So, so my first exposure to that film was in like my peripheral vision, um, with the sound off. Right. Oh I just God. all I saw, all I saw was like an Asian girl like doing DDR <laughs> in an mm -hmm. arcade, mm -hmm. and then I saw like a flash of braids. Okay. And I was like, oh, this has to be uh -huh. that Karate Kid movie, and I don't know why I thought that. And I watched just long enough for Jaden's face to show up on the screen. I was like, yes, I was correct. And then I turned away. <laughs> wow. I'm genuinely surprised you haven't seen it. Well, no. So, so it, that's, I saw that. And then I was like, oh, wait. Okay. So there's going to be at least one Jackie Chan fight scene. So I'm going to find that and watch it. And then I haven't seen the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's Jackie cheating. Chan is, is one of my heroes, man. Oh, that's Growing cheating, up. though. Yeah. No, no. I did like, like reports, oral presentations about the man. I love this guy. <laughs> And so, like, the movie comes out, and all I really want to see is, like, like his... It's just, like, him going off on, like, a creative level. Not, like, not like him acting, but, like, him directing his the whole thing. His acting is actually really good, yeah, 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 His singing is great as well. But, um... But in I, this I movie, saw the, like... Does he sing in the movie? No. Okay, no. But there, I, there I saw are... the, the him beating down on the kids without, like... Oh, so up. good. Such it's, a good It's scene. excellent. Yeah, oh I God. love it. It's so I good. I love it. I would have loved to be one of those kids. <laughs> yeah, his... Oh. His acting in the movie is actually very good. Oh no, he's he's an he's an actual actor. He's like, no, I know he's like generally he's, very good, but like, no, like he's like classically trained. <laughs> but like, uh, um, 
there are some like serious, like very emotional moments in the movie. And it's like, Oh, for really sure. well done for sure. Like straight up. I compared it as the eighties karate kid is a movie. That's good for its time. And the new karate kid is a movie. That's just great. Period. Yeah, no, I agree. Have you explored that? Explored what? Uh, the, the the phrasing of how you just said that, like a movie that's good for its time. Like you and I understand what we mean. Oh yeah. That. Uh, okay, I think we talked about it briefly in Alex's episode, episode six. Oh, okay, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> yeah. For a little, because episode a big chunk of episode six. This is kind of just turning into a recap. Look, it's of the season, season so now. far. That's totally fine. The first. <laughs> Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick second to ask you to give us a shout out on social media. Every share makes a pretty big difference. And as always, don't forget to rate and or subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. Thanks again. Back to the episode. This is kind of just turning into a recap. Look, it's the, the season, season so far. Episode, That's totally fine. Yeah, the first, <laughs> you know, first half is we'll totally fine with me. We'll get us there. Um, the a good chunk of of episode six was uh, uh, talking about uh, the Godfather and Godfather remakes. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Have you even seen The Godfather? Yeah, like by your own volition, have you seen The Godfather? Well, it was for a class, but I, I was going to say, it. I'm sorry. But yeah. <laughs> okay. I did watch the whole thing. It was for a class? Yeah. Which class? I was may it? or may not have been playing Minesweeper while watching it. Yeah, that's fair. But I did watch the whole thing. Did you have to watch all of them? No, just the first one. Oh, thank God. It yeah. was for a class called Great Screenwriters. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, which was a god awful class. Whatever. Um, at least for me, whatever. I, some people have more appreciation than what I do. What films did you have to watch? Oh my god. Um. Okay, I'll try to remember. I'll try to remember as many as I can. Sure. There's The Godfather. There's Just the Groundhog first one. Day. Oh yeah, of course. Um, Eternal Sunshine. I love that movie. Th- those two I liked. Groundhog Day and Eternal Sunshine. Yeah, those are, those both good movies. Up. They hold up. Um, Butch Cassidy, which was okay. Like Sundance Kid, Butch Cassidy, just all the the actual, yeah, the actual nineteen sixties one or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. or fifties, something like that. Um, there was a, a movie from the sixties about two guys who pretend to be women to get into some place. I can't remember the name anymore. Was it what era? No, what? No, no. Like, what era was it? Oh, I think it was like sixties. So it's not fifties or sixties. It's uh, some like it hot, right? That might be it. The Marilyn Monroe. That might movie. be it. Let me, let me do a quick Google here. Actually, yeah. Let's verify this before I, I commit to being wrong. It says nineteen fifty nine. Um. Wikipedia. <laughs> Yeah, I think this was the one. Uh, black and white, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, this is one of them. <laughs> yep. I, wow. Um, I, I liked it. What else? It's it's super reflective of being a 1950s movie. Sure, it was fine. Honestly, it was fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, you know. What? 13 years ago, I made a, I had a poster of this printed out at Kinkos. Because <laughs> 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 like 60 bucks. <laughs> wow. And I hadn't seen the movie. Wow. Yeah. Um. Oh, what else? Bunch Cassidy. Um, this was called Great. Great screen screen writers. writers. Yeah. So it's about the... Okay, that's fair. It's supposed that's to be fair. about the scripts. Well, I mean... So... But really what you you're can You're supposed to from watch the, the movie and, and then read the script. And you didn't do one of these two things. And <laughs> I did watch the movie. Okay. And I skimmed the script at most. That's fair. Um, And I ended up getting, I think, like a C in the class because I really <laughs> didn't give a shit. 
And I took it as an elective. I thought it was going to be fun. That is a fun <laughs> class. They weren't good movies. That's a that's a weird stretch. Wait, of the ones that I've mentioned so far, seen the the ones that I've mentioned so far, the ones I actually liked, with the exception of Godfather. Mm. I don't even remember the other ones because I didn't like them. Sure. What was the rate at which you were assessing these? Like one a week? Something like that? Yeah. I think there was 12 total, I want to say. Okay. So I think it was basically one a week. Um. So yeah, the ones that I mentioned were the ones that I liked. They didn't present these chronologically, did they? That would have been painful. No. Yeah. No, it was out of order. Um. God, I can't remember the other ones. Sure. There was definitely some other westerns. Oh, rough. Oh, um, a Taxi Driver or something? Taxi Driver. That's topical. Uh, uh, Joker came out uh, what, two weeks ago. One week ago? No, two weeks ago. It's two or three weeks. I think it's been two weeks. The Joker. DC and Warner Brothers. Yeah, Taxi Driver, 76. Phoenix. I think that's the one. Directed by Todd Phillips. Taxi Driver is a, like a renowned movie, right? <sighs> I mean, it's iconic. It's not necessarily like. I wonder how they structured the movies yeah. they signed. Yeah, this is definitely pe- one yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, I did, did not like this movie. You didn't like all of it or like? I didn't like pretty much any of it. That's there fair. might have been some parts that were okay. Have you seen Joker? You haven't yet. This is why no. you haven't been reacting to me. Yeah. So you're not going to watch the Joker either, are you? <laughs> no, I will. I actually do want to. I just have not gone around to it's it yet. It's just another... I mean, that's a gross simplification that it's another taxi driver. The problem with the taxi driver, though, and I'm like relying on memory that's now like three years old, and I didn't really like it that much in the first place. So it's kind you were of offended like, by the whole funny. movie or how it ends? Uh, definitely how it ends. Um, the ambiguity I, of the ending? Yeah, I remember, doesn't he just go like on a murderous rampage spree or whatever? <sighs> okay, okay. He goes and he rescues Jodie Foster um, from her pimp. Um, you know, 12 year old Jodie Foster playing a 13 year old New York City hooker or something like that. Um, oh, wow. I th- no, geez. Can you fact check me? I think, I think it's Jodie Foster. Uh, let's see. I think it's Jodie Foster. But, um, yeah, this, this taxi driver who clearly yep. is on like the, like the autism spectrum to be well, honest. Yeah. It says he's, uh, mentally unstable. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a very dedicated performance of a taxi driver who is very influenced by, um, I don't want to say American media, just media in general. Uh, cause he has no one that he talks to. I just remember the film feeling very disjointed. I mean, that that's kind of deliberate in that we're looking into the lifestyle of very influential, not influential, easily influenced, <laughs> unstable, um, man who is who like subscribes to what is around the most. So the misogyny of the people around him, the people he has to drive, the racism of the area that he lives. Um, he's completely thrown off his game by the existence of a of a twelve year old prostitute, <laughs> right? Oh, okay. And so, like, that's the one like it's the one thing in him that kind of veers off of like his his path he he feels compelled to do something um to remove this young person from the world that he's grown accustomed to seeing every day and then he goes on the murderous rampage to save her but it's not even to save her but that's how the media depicts him surviving the bloodbath that he causes at the end of the movie See, the way you're describing it sounds so much better than I remember the movie being. And that's probably because you're not reading the scripts. <laughs> uh, I just remember feeling like uh, like lost at several moments and and not. I, I, I was lost when um, he like he like shaves his head, not shaves it. He, he mohawks. Oh, Pulp Fiction. That was another one. Well, the, OK. I didn't like it. You didn't like it as a example of great screenwriting or just as a film. Mm, I suppose as a film, 
be more accurate. Is that the only Tarantino writing film? Writing was fine. That you um, had to... <clears throat> yes, I think it was the only Tarantino uh, film on that that's list. That's fair. I guess that's fair. Um, you have to pick one. The I get that he's like playing with film structure and whatever. Yeah, but it just felt like retelling the same story three times to me. And you're not into that? No. There is a movie that, if you know it exists, I think you hate it. It's called Vantage Point. From. It sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah, it might have been 2008 or 9. Yeah, it tells the story of a presidential assassination attempt from multiple perspectives. Of oh, I've read a description. I don't think I've Quaid. seen it. I think Forrest Whitaker. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, that is the most extreme example I can Matthew give. Fox, Forrest yeah, Whitaker. Yeah, Matt Fox, yeah. Yeah, Dennis Quaid. Uh, uh, Alien? I don't Sigourney Weaver. Think I s- think she's saw on it. <clears throat> yes, I definitely have seen the description though, and I've seen the poster on like Netflix or something. Oh, I love that poster. Is um, it the poster with like it's the shape of a it's a silhouette of a man? Yeah, the, yeah, that that's a great. Poster. It's a really good poster. Yeah, it's like cl- the only thing I'd maybe do is increase the type size of the movie's title. It's sure. a little more obvious. Sure. It's a silhouette of a man and it's like a patchwork quilt of yep. like different of images. black and white yep. outlines of it's a good poster. Are they actual like photograph? Or it looks are like they... it. I can't remember if they're stylized or it's, not. It's yeah, there's definitely so it looks they're like very clearly stills. taken at different angles. I'm guessing stills from different parts of the movie, plus in the middle yeah, is the main cast on black. And then vantage point towards the bottom. Yeah, it's a good poster. Straight up, just a good poster. Um, yeah, but I don't think I've seen that one yet. Um, did you also hate um, seasons one and two of Heroes? <laughs> of what? <laughs> of Heroes. I haven't seen it. NBC's Heroes? <laughs> haven't yeah, seen you it. would not have seen that. Uh, oh, Casablanca? We saw that one too in that class. That one was okay. Oh, man. Yeah. I didn't love it. But I think it it's a fun. better script than a better movie. Fair. Uh, I'm just looking at a list of like great top movies, great movies. Or whatever. Oh, figure out which ones you. No, that was on my own. Never mind. Was Forrest Gump on that no, as an example wasn't. of like not great <laughs> script? No, no, it wasn't on the list. I have seen Forrest Gump though. I saw it like, like once. With family, yeah. <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. It was a good movie. That's fair. Uh, I like watching it. Seen but like ironically, else. like being fully aware of all of the things. Mm. We've touched on a, f- a number. I think we're at like eight or nine of the ones that we've I've seen. I saw. No, the they were all domestic. All yeah. Production. Oh, Chinatown. That looks familiar. What is Chinatown? Uh. Oh yeah, this one's a detective movie. Uh. A neo-noir mystery film directed by Roman Polanski. Mm, I don't know. Starring Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway. It was about the California Water Wars. Okay. It was okay-ish. Like it... Yeah, it was okay. Okay, Okay-ish. Like forgettable. There There are a few that were just forgettable for me in the class. Um... Oh, were there seen. specific takeaways that they intended to have you recognize in all of these films, like like dialogue or just? I don't even know. Yeah, okay. I just gave I mean, my honest assessment. <laughs> sure. I was just like, this movie sucked, dick. Um, it was slow. All movies uh, were inefficient. Slow. Come on. Uh, the dialogue was stunted at times. The acting was less than ideal. Blah blah blah. Yeah. That's yeah, that's fair. Fargo, I think that was in the class too. That one was fine. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. Did you give the show a chance? No, not yet. I may or may not ever watch that. That's fair. Who knows? It's a toss-up. There's so much stuff to watch these days. Realistically, I probably will never watch it. Uh, I mean, at this moment, you have 
all of CW's Arrowverse pulled up. I know, right? In chronological order. I've got, <laughs> I've got my viewing signed up for the next easily few months. Sure. Just on that alone. <clears throat> Not even counting keeping up with oh, the shows that are live. Of course, yeah. Because like, I'm watching The Rookie and Modern Family. and oh, as, they, as they go out. Wait, is The Rookie... Yeah. finishing or is it no it's season two it's season two started season two but modern family is modern family is like season 11 but or it's like it's their last one right i'm not sure i'm not sure i know i know they've figured out when it's ending and it's soon i don't know if it's this one or the next it could be um and then uh there's a few more that <laughs> i'm blanking on but i yeah for for the audience i'm watching arrow slash flash slash the rest of the universe starting from arrow season three which was like 2014 yeah so you don't even have to account for supergirl yet oh no not yet because <laughs> i had watched i had actually watched a little bit into season three a while ago of, of arrow yeah and and into you know eight episodes into the flash or whatever something like that like literally literally i think i was three or four episodes away from the crossovers Oh no! Those I just so didn't good. quite make it, <laughs> and I'll tell you exactly why. It's because I was watching Arrow straight That's cool, sure, from season one, like all the way up to this point. Without I wasn't watching to, it live. Oh uh, sure, and it just honestly it got very repetitive because the show how, follows how a lot of similar beats. It's a lot the of the entire, same okay, shit. No, the entire Lying first to each half, other, the saying they're not going to lie to each other anymore. Like, it's just the same shit over and over again. I feel like you don't appreciate soap operas, but the entire first half of <laughs> Arrow not. season one was literally still figuring out how to make the show, who's going to stay on the show. <laughs> yeah. How, how often they're going to apply the green filter. <laughs> when I was watching it, I was like, I was, I loved it. Like seasons one and two, I was like really into it. Oh yeah, yeah, I love it. And no, then season, season two three excellent. starts, and it's like this, this is, is still good. Excellent. This season two is amazing. Yeah, I'm like this is still good, but it's the same thing over and over and over again. Okay, that was my assessment. At the I mean, time. Uh, we'll see what happens yes. now. <laughs> Structurally, that's kind of the point. Um, I guess I was. And for, you know, many of its viewership, I was intrigued by the idea of, of Arrow addressing, embracing uh, a Batman villain as its, uh, as its lead antagonist. Oh, When Harry Met Sally. That was also in that class. Right. That's unrelated to Arrow. But yeah, <laughs> no, yes. sorry. I'm you don't, still you don't like When Harry list. Met Sally? No, it was, f- it was come okay. Come on. Come on. Wait, hold on. Actually, I think I did like Not that even one. for the dialogue? I did like that one. I think. Unless, did I watch it? I can't tell if it was that one or if I'm mixing it up with Groundhog Day. Well, okay, Bill Murray, Billy Crystal, very different people. But they have the same first name. Uh, who who wrote When Harry Met Sally? What is her name? I look it up on Wikipedia. Let's see. It was directed by Rob Reiner. Right. Written by Nora F. It was Nora. Yeah. Maybe I didn't watch this one. Oh, man. Go back and watch that one. Watch it. No, I didn't watch this one. That's too bad. Yeah, I knew you would enjoy that. Yeah, actually, Especially no, as a I fan of, like, I did, of like, I did, modern I did like family. This one. Yeah. Okay, okay. I did like this okay. one. The style of the, that. That's, a hard to, that's hard to read, that script, if you don't understand that kind of storytelling. I don't think I read the script, but I didn't yeah, enjoy probably. the movie. Yeah, <laughs> um, I really... That class just did not did not live up to my expectations at all. Well, like, what versions of the scripts were they giving you? Were they giving you, like, the ones with, like, the like the scenes that weren't in the movie or anything like that? Like, that's, that's a cool I honestly insight. couldn't tell you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> they... I was expecting it to be more writing-focused. That's how I took it. It's like, I wanted it... For some reason in my head, and I think if I would have read the description more closely, I wouldn't have come to this um, conclusion. But in my head, I was thinking it would be like, like appreciating historical cinema and like writing with it in mind. Something like that. Like that's what it was in my mind, but that's just not how it turned out at all. 
It was pretty much just a film history class. Sure. That's basically what it was. It's like a 200 level class. Like, what did you expect? It was 300 level. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Around the time that you took this class, there was, uh, it was my favorite um, it, it class might in have, the catalog. It might have satisfied one of my required general education elective oh, I'm sure. requirements. I'm sure. It probably did. I don't think I would have taken it if it didn't. Around the same time as this class, there was a uh, one time only. It was called The Supreme's Greatest Hits, and it was like a 500 level law course. Okay. And the enrollment for this was absurd, right? But day one, like, like 80% of the people dropped out when they realized it wasn't about The Supreme's. Oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's like, how did you sign up for a 500 level law course without any pushback? I, yeah, that's, yeah. I did take a 494 elective short story writing class. Oh, the 494 is our In my freshman class. year. Yeah, anyone can take a 494. <laughs> um, I love that class. That was one of my favorite classes in college. I think, I think. It Alex didn't require I... any of my, it didn't satisfy any of my requirements. Sure. I took it completely on my own. I believe Alex and I met in a 494 class. I could see that. It's very plausible. Yeah, I think that I think that happened. All right, so let's recap all the ones that I saw. I'll tell you the ones I liked and didn't like to the best of my knowledge. So there's The Godfather. My opinions on this are well known. It's too long. It is too long. Uh, needs to be edited. About yes. an hour of it is yeah. unnecessary. It's almost three. Is that right? It's three hours. It yeah. is three hours? It does not. It needs to be... I, I you could cut an hour out of that. You could easily, easily cut an hour and I bet you could cut an hour and a half. I bet it's possible. You want like the Topher Grace edit? <laughs> <laughs> Just like forty eight minutes of commercials. The, <laughs> the edit to two thousand ten <coughs> X standards edit. Okay. If that makes sense. No, I so like sure. efficient. Yeah. Uh and then there's pulp fiction. Was not how a fan. Do, how do you edit that down, though? I, that is I a don't mini know. series. Pulp, I don't think you can really edit you Pulp Fiction any different. Mini-series. For me, one of the things about it was everyone like praises the dialogue in the movie, right? Uh, excuse you. <laughs> As yes. a general rule of thumb. I didn't find it that amazing. I don't know if I was just consistently missing everything. Like, that's possible. But Potentially. To me, a lot of it was so slow. And I feel like just Travolta. Yeah, just I don't know. And I'm just monologuing. Honestly, Travolta makes me inherently dislike something just from the get go. <laughs> okay. So, like, that didn't help its case. I empathize, yeah. Um, it did help um, with Samuel L. Jackson. That, that's right. just the exact opposite effect for me. Is that inherently makes me like the film to start. Okay. So they kind of like balance each other out a little bit. But there's like like the scene in the car, like at the very beginning. Yeah. Where they're talking to each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone is like, oh, that scene's so amazing. And I'm like, I did I miss it? Like I it didn't seem that amazing to me. It just was like they said five words and it took five minutes. Like it's 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 kind of like this. Um and I almost don't want to tell you this. Okay. But the quality of the dialogues that you have in real life <laughs> uh-huh. are generally very high. <laughs> okay. And and about on par with and as outrageous as a lot of Tarantino scripts. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're saying I live in a bubble and my expectations are really high? And that's fine. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know, general public, I mean, I'm okay with that. General public does not get to see stuff like that or be part of stuff like that. Okay, so maybe it just came across to me as like normal. It it would come across as as normal. But I'd probably have to watch it. I don't. I honestly don't remember at this point. But I'd have to see it again to provide new uh, context to it. Uh, let's see here, and then we have Casablanca. It's fine. Um, didn't hate it. Didn't love it. I kind of hate it. Um, I, I, I understand. Why I I l- I lean on the dislike side. Yeah, but I didn't hate it. 
There are definitely movies I hated. The Godfather and Pulp Fiction being two of them. But I think honestly just, well, whatever. I've already said what I need to say about that. Uh, let's see. And then we have... Uh, where's the next one? Taxi Driver. Hated it. Okay. Um, it's just not my kind of thing. Uh, I wouldn't rewatch it. Uh, and I would hope that, like, for future generations, we have other movies that we can refer people to to watch in place of Taxi Driver to sort of, like, address or spark conversations about the things in Taxi Driver. Yeah, I'd hope so. Uh, I just hate that, like, at this point in our lives, we're still going back to Taxi Driver and saying, no, you should go watch that yeah. before we have this discussion. And then Chinatown. Yeah, um, probably, probably have to see that at some point. Probably about the same as Casablanca for me. Like, didn't hate it, but leaning on the dislike side. Sure. But it was... It was okay. Like there was something there. Is Chinatown about white people in Chinatown? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think so. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fargo. It's fine. It's good. Decent. Leaning on the side of liking it, I'd say. So kind of in the middle, but leaning on the side of Yeah, that's, that's a strange film. It was, yeah, a very strange film for sure. It's very uh, iconic. Okay. Unfortunate yeah. title. Yeah, it was, yeah. Some Like It Hot. Again, I'd say I was um, leaning on the Like It side. So, so, so do you want to get on board with this and say that if we had a replacement for some like it hot, it would probably be white chicks. I haven't seen it. Well, you're going to have to see it soon because they're making the sequel and we're all going to that opening night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, Butch Cassidy. Um, I didn't like it. Sure. But I mean, it's at this not point, that hundred percent that has been replaced there's, many times over. There's, there's a few scenes that are decent. Um, definitely, definitely some scenes that I liked, but overall didn't really like it. Are they all the, just the two handers between Butch and the kid? The two handers? Yeah. It's just the two of them just going at it. Just talking about it. No, I actually like the, I actually like the fight scenes in it. Really? Yeah. Like the final gunfight. Oh, sure. Is decent. Did you get to watch Tombstone? Have you seen Tombstone on your own? No. Oh, that, I would have. I haven't seen many Westerns. You shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't. You should not. Um, I saw the um, uh, the Magnificent Seven. Okay, sure. Um, and then the one with um, God, what is his name? I mean, you've name? seen better versions of the Magnificent Seven at this point. Yeah, probably. Um, behind you is Django, if that counts. It's not really like a Western per se, it, it but is it a, has a, it Western a Western feel. feel. Yeah. Uh, and Django was solid. Um, yeah, Django's great. Um, that movie whose name is, I told, is totally escaping me. It has, um, um, uh, it's a Western Tron, old Tron, not old Tron, <clears> um, bridges. like from the yeah, bridges. Yeah. Jeff Bridges. It's not Olivia. That doesn't, really, <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't really, uh, narrow it no, down. We'll get does there. It? We'll get, um, what do you got? What do you got? Um, Oh my God! I think it's Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf and Jeff Bridges. I want to say. Oh, I might have to me. look this up. I look. He's got Transformers, Jeff Bridges, Fury, Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye is amazing. I love that movie. You want to see? You want to see not Eagle Eye next weekend, right, Jexy? Is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Eagle Eye like five times. I have I seen really specific like sequences of that many times over because I think they're insane and I love them. But I, I don't think I've actually seen the whole film. Like when it becomes apparent what... Um, oh, who is the voice? Is the voice Julianne Moore? Of... 
Oh, it's of uh, Rosario and Dawson. Eagle Eye? <laughs> oh, no, it's not Rosario Dawson. It's Julianne Moore, right? It might be. Yeah, when, it when it becomes apparent what her plan is, like, yeah. I, I've never actually seen that plan attempt to be executed. Yeah, it was the first time I've seen it. But like I've that. seen... No, no, no. I mean, like, I haven't seen that sequence of the movie, like, that... Oh. That, like, 20-minute span, but I've seen up to, and then after that... Oh. <laughs> okay. Repeatedly. <laughs> uh, the, the other Western I was thinking of was True Grit. Oh, yeah, True Grit. Child Love, that. isn't that? Uh no, it's he's he's not. Okay. I was just messing okay. missing um uh, mixing it up. Who were you thinking of? Uh I think the girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh rough. I, I wanna say. Um it's a young younger like a teenager in the movie. Yeah. Um let's see who it is. It's uh Haley Steinfeld. Oh, topical. Because you yeah. don't know who that girl is. You <laughs> just I, established. Yeah, no, so. I don't. So she's grown up. She has she has the same face, <laughs> but she's she's grown up from then. Indeed and she's she gonna is. be Hawkeye's protege. In Jeremy Renner's Is she one of his the, kids? Is it the television show? No. Oh no. No 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 no. Yeah. Okay, wait, so Eagle Eye. It would be just, interesting just if she's like a contemporary so. like a cousin of his kids, but then didn't blip. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Just like exploring like Hawkeye's farm <laughs> for wow. five years. Okay, Eagle Eye. Uh, okay, Rachel. Rosario Dawson was in the movie. She she was the other main character, though. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, Rachel McAdams is the, oh shit, is it Rachel McAdams? No, there's, um, Michelle Monaghan. It's Michelle Monaghan. Oh, damn. I love her. Or no, she's, she's Go the watch, mother. Yeah, she's, she's the other character. Go watch a uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. You know what? She's in every, uh, she, I like Michelle Monaghan quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, she's in every Mission Impossible movie that I think you've seen because you haven't seen all of them. Right? You haven't seen the first two? I haven't seen the first three. You, oh, God. Yeah, she's the she's the wife of Tom Cruise's character. But Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is amazing. No, no, no. What am I thinking of? Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Yeah, the, the Robert Downey Jr. movie. It's like Iron Man and Batman and Michelle Moynihan. <laughs> What are you researching? I'm just checking who is the voice in Eagle Eye. I want to bet it's Julianne Moore. You might be right. It sounds familiar. Uh, but if you tell me it's Rosario Dawson, I, I'm i okay with that too. Be way off, but I'm okay with that. Don't tell me it's an uncredited role. It is Julianne Moore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've wrapped that up, let me go back to the list. <laughs> Child above tension. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So like Groundhog it, uh, Day. Groundhog Solid Day. Solid movie. What's our, What's your favorite Groundhog Day analog since Groundhog Day? Um. Oh, that's a good question. Um. There's a there was a TV show. Okay. In like 2007 or something like that. Um, whose name is escaping me, but it was of the same concept. Um, detective repeats the same day over and over and over again. It is a detective. It's not a random guy getting a newspaper. And, yeah. Okay. It's a proper detective. <laughs> it's not the morning edition. It's the next one. Yeah. I, I know the one you're talking about. I forget what that's called too. Um, yeah, that was a, a really good series. I really liked it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm on board the, uh, happy death day. Happy Death Day to you, franchise. Happy Death Day? Happy Death Day. I didn't think I would like it, but it's a, it's really, it's a science fiction um, that makes fun of horror movies. Okay. Um, the main character dies on her birthday, 
and then wakes up on her birthday fully aware of what happened on her birthday the last time she tried to live it and then she tries to huh. figure out who's trying to kill her and stop it from happening every, okay every time she dies she wakes up and then she's just caught in that loop hmm. and then in the sequel it's the day after and it's happening again <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. so it's a full-on parody at that point yeah it's it's a wonderful like but they break the loop like very quickly in the second one. Okay. And so it becomes like a, it's like a back to the future okay. love letter, but in the context of horror movies. Interesting. All right. Well, the next one is Eternal Sunshine. Good movie. Oh. Solid movie. Very really good. enjoyed it. Very good. That's. Uh, and When Harry Met Sally, also a good movie. It's Jim Carrey and John McClane's daughter. Scott Pilgrim's Love Interest. Is Kate it? Winslet. It's not uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead? No. both. Well, the two names that are showing up are Kate Winslet and Kirsten Dunst. I remember Kirsten Dunst in the movie. Kate Winslet, really? I'm not like looking any deeper into it, but that's just the, the highlight. I only ever saw it once. That's rough. And that was, that was before I had glasses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Then Harry Met Sally. Solid. Good movie. No. Great movie. Um. Another one on here that was not in this class, but The Hangover. I finally watched it, like, maybe a month ago or two months ago. I still haven't seen The Hangover. It's honestly, you're not really missing that. Much. No. 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 Okay. Okay. Well, I have a Hangover themed game, <laughs> and I haven't seen The Hangover. It's. You know what I have seen? I've seen The Hangover 2 and Hangover 3, and those are amazing dark comedies. Okay. The Hangover, I could see why everyone loved it, and particularly at the time, because I think it actually was very Ken well Jung. executed. No. <laughs> yeah, sure. Ken Jung. Mike Tyson. Um, it, was, it was pretty well done in general, but I feel like since I came into it with so much like historical hype, it kind of ruined it a little bit. Did it ruin it to see like, the guy from National Treasure <laughs> disappear. <laughs> no, wait. The friend that disappears isn't he the Riley from National Treasure? Oh, I'm not sure. I've seen like he's a on, National Treasure movie. Oh, you don't even know which National Treasure movie. I just know it's Nick That's Cage. Rough. You know, it's fine. Okay, well, I think the the cultural significance of that movie was besides the memes, it was just everyone's first exposure. To Zach Galifianakis and his performance and his his humor. Okay, he was the breakout star of the movie. In National Treasure? No, not National Treasure. Of, of oh, the hangover. hangover. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. He's the most interesting character. Yeah, and then he piggybacks off of that into his. Well, I, he was running his Funnier Die series. He's oh my god, his talk show is still going. His like parody talk show. Oh yeah. Uh, Between two ferns. Yeah. And then he went into a Robert Downey Jr. movie. <laughs> All big, big plays. Yeah, solid. And then that director went on to make The Joker. Oh. Okay. Comes full circle. Yeah, well, it's Hollywood. Yeah. I think that's all of the movies that we watched. That you enjoyed. Certainly all the ones I enjoyed. I don't think there's any yeah, more in here. There were a few that I didn't even watch. Um, I don't remember what they were, <laughs> obviously. At that point, you were like, I'm just trying to pass this class. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh. Uh, all right, let's, let's, <laughs> let's finally transition to something else an hour <laughs> in. <laughs> First, we do a season one recap of After Dark <laughs> and then a recap of this class I, mean, I took in college it's a years recap, ago but i like these pr episodes haven't been produced yet. yeah it's true it's a recap of all but episodes eight and nine which haven't been made yet yikes uh, i want to go back after and see like how much I, I assume you won't try to force any of it but how much um any of this comes up naturally with the remaining episodes that have yet to be produced what do you mean? Like, like, so what are you at right now? This is going to be 10. This is going to be you're 10. You're missing, missing 8 and 9. 8 and 9. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Oh, We're pretty mind. close. Never mind. Yeah. I think uh, what might be fun is to do like a, a recap 
um, uh, what's that? What's that called? Uh, where you respond to something, react uh, episode, like a bonus episode. Oh, okay. That okay, could I be get fun. It. So, like, I'd I'd put together like clips from the original episodes. And then just have all of us individually yeah, or as a group. I don't know. That, <laughs> That's gonna be hard. That'd be tough. I'd I can I'm only technically set up for four people and I don't even have a fourth mic. So I have to buy a fourth mic. No, I see the input, yeah. Um but I could I could do up to four people. I could do it just like you, Alex, me and uh Frank. That that covers the the core squad. The core squad being people who've been on more than once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the people who unapologetically laugh into the microphones. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I think that makes it more fun. Oh, well, anyways, we, we might do that. We'll see. It's an idea. I literally just had it, and I'll think about it later. Um, so we didn't do any pitching so far. <laughs> We came into this so, with an so idea. So you invited me do. on to I know, right? pitch movies to each other. I, I'm confused right. as to like what's the. Looks like we're going to two hours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm down. Um, yeah, no. The idea was we'd um, pitch. Like we're not critiquing pitches, or what's happening? No, like like we come up with an idea, pitch it, and then like talk about it. A oh, bit, you okay. Know? Did you have anything prepared? Because this I sounds have, like a, a bunch few. of like improv exercises. That I have a few prepared. To. Okay. Um, so I'd you be jump into fine right to start. Now? Sure. Yeah, um, let's, see, what do we got? <clears throat> let's start with one that's been topically on my mind, and it's a Star Wars movie. Okay. Uh, like, like not a Star Wars style, but you want to add to... In the Star Wars system. universe. Okay, so yeah. everything that's there is in play now, and you want to add to it? Yeah. Okay, what do you got? So this would be a... Um, uh, it's about Obi-Wan Kenobi. In the middle of his exile. How old is he? Um, so, like, take episode three and add 30 years. More Isn't this just the TV show? What is the TV show? This is literally a TV Wars? show. No, this is a TV show. Ewan McGregor is back on board to be older Obi-Wan as a TV show for Star Wars. Oh, he channel. is? Well, not the Star Wars, the Disney Plus Disney channel. Plus? Yeah. I didn't even it was know like that. a thing. Well, okay, it could be similar, but I'll, what I was it's going like for was Wars. what I was going for was he like goes to like a backwater type planet and just kind of like lives a quiet life. Yeah. Right. Uh, while Luke is growing up, so actually, no, this wouldn't be thirty years because Luke would have to still be a kid. So like ten years. It's really it, he ages very quickly. <laughs> Let's the timeline does not add up. Obi Wan ages very quickly between. Luke's oh yeah, birth you're and right. He's 18 years. Yeah, because <laughs> he looks like he's like 25, and yeah, then he looks we like don't, he's like we don't 65. explain it. We just like let it happen. That's that a he, good point. It's it's not. There's, there's a huge gap. It's there. insane. Yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. Well, let's say 10 years, right? So he looks a little old. He looks older. He looks like middle aged. We'll say. Okay. Um, so he's on this like sort of backwater planet, and just living a, a calm life. Maybe he does like protection detail for local you think uh, he would want to get that close to like the old life like he needs that adrenaline rush to i think i think he just does it for the money just so he can live he's not just like i don't have to pay rent this month <laughs> to his landlord no <laughs> does the hand wave <laughs> I'm already three months just, in just <laughs> oh my God. The landlord like looks at his books one day is like why is this guy 12 months behind on rent? <laughs> you and I co-own this property. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, no, so, so I imagine he d- he's doing like low level protection detail just for like, you know, people who have a little bit of money on this planet, but no one's like really that rich because it's, it's kind of backwater, you know? Um, And then he ends up getting like sucked, like a, a bounty hunter comes to, um, the planet with some like force abilities. So it could even be a straight up Sith. I um, mean, it wouldn't be, you think it's like a, it's like a Jedi who's just like over it. Oh yeah. Actually that's even better. Uh, so like a former Jedi that got out 
and like managed to survive yeah, the, got away. the purge. Yeah. The purge. Yeah. And has become a, you know, a sociopathic basically or, sure. or just, or just generally like jaded and is like a bounty hunter. And he goes after like his friend on this planet. And so he kind of gets like sucked into it again. And you get like a fighting style from him. That's like grittier and he's, he's older. So he's kind of like lost a little bit oh, of the from, speed from Obi-Wan. Yeah. So it's less, it's less like refined. It's a little more scrappier, you know? Are you just trying to force a Logan into the Star Wars? Kind of. It's like a Logan cross with Taken in so Star Wars. So it's an 80 minute Western. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On a swamp planet. It should be yeah. Liam Neeson. Like as the bridge between you and McGregor. And I, he's wonderful, but I forget his name. Uh, Qui-Gon? No, the... Oh, that is a problem. <laughs> yeah. No, as oh, you as, just forgot as that Obi Wan in the Star Wars universe. Well, I hadn't forgotten, not really, but um, as like the like Ewan McGregor into. So like we recast Ewan re- McGregor. Yeah, recast him as Liam Neeson, <laughs> but playing. <laughs> it is a problem. I understand that now. Oh my god, that would be great. I was trying to find someone who could like fill the gap in the age oh, bracket. Yeah. Or just recast him as like Idris Elba. He gets he gets so old so fast <laughs> in in not even eighteen years. Who would fit? Like Robert De Niro. No, he's That's too old. Still at this too point. old. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you'll uh, see him in Joker, and they they did a really good job like de aging him. Um. Um. Vin Diesel. I don't know. <laughs> he, he got slower. <laughs> But he also doubled his mass. <laughs> just, just go all the way and just do the rock. <laughs> just doesn't make any sense. Two and a, oh, Statham. Statham. Oh, there yeah, you we go. messed up. Yeah, okay, go. that's good. Go. That's I like the, that. He's timeless at this point. Yeah, and then we get to keep the you get to lose the hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. It's Irish, right? You and that's Irish. Not it's, uh, it's in that Scottish? area. It could be McGregor is, is is and ridiculous. Statham is. Statham's not Irish or Scottish. He's he's from London, but he's from like the shittier parts of London. I think. <laughs> sure. I I don't know. I'm not familiar. Cockney with or whatever. Life. Something like that. So yeah, that was kind of my. You have a Star Wars movie idea. A Star Wars movie idea. Yeah. In the universe. Yeah. Um. Uh, it would be a workplace comedy, and it would be very much <laughs> in the. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It'd okay. be very much like okay. uh I'm this is off the top of my head. Uh-huh. Uh I haven't seen more than an episode of Powerless. Um, okay. which was the I think NBC uh insurance firm in the world of the DC universe uh-huh. trying to deal with like an insurance company who's like I I understand that like it was necessary. <laughs> But I can't cover the structural damage from like Superman's whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, and it would just be um, like low, low level Republic um, like clerks <laughs> 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 who are just dealing with like living in a world where, yeah, like w- they're on the wrong side of this, but it's the comfortable side. <laughs> okay. Right. I remember seeing a. Like they don't. They're not true believers, but the, as a as an office, they're like they're kind of stuck where they are. I remember watching a. It wasn't in Star Wars. It was an off-brand like parody show. I think. Um, I think it was just a web series, uh, and it was about stormtroopers on. The oh, Death that's Star. not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they're like, it's basically a workplace comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know? That was solid. Was are fun. they actively deployed? And they're coming back and forth. I think they... Th- they might be. That'd be, that'd be really dark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a little. That's, that's darker than I want to take this. But yeah, yeah, I'm down. So yeah, I thought that was that was fun. I think in general with Star Wars, the all they have to do is do a popular movie franchise in the Star Wars universe, and it's like a like a framework for making money. Sure. Like do like a Mission Impossible in Star Wars. Have you are you familiar with the Mass Effect um, video gaming series? Yeah. What I what I love most about that um, has nothing to do with their gameplay. It's actually a critical 
part of their um, world building. Okay. And it's that <coughs> uh, humans are humans are irrelevant, and not not even the aspect that they are looked down upon, in because the, they're they're like the babies in like intergalactic space travel. Mm-hmm. Right? They're, they're they're the new kids on the block who yeah. discovered space travel last week, basically. Yeah. But because it's a video game. And they don't have to hire actors or build costumes. Um, so much of the, the the sweeping majority of life as depicted in that universe is not humanoid shaped. Sentient life does not have to be bipedal and able to sit down in a in a. Cockpit. A lot of them are though. It, yeah, many of them are right, and um, mostly the ones that you associate with, and that's that's like forced on you um, mm. for in-game reasons. Like they, yeah. they they go out of their way to justify, it and it's fine. And they but, got a facial capture actor. Oh, of stuff, course, so. of course. But but when you're interacting in their cities, right? There's the droids, which can be whatever shapes, whatever. But then there's also like the like you're walking around, and there's like this this guy. It's like let's just pull um, grimace from. <laughs> Okay. McDonald's, the purple right. dude. Yeah. Like that's just a normal situation. Um, but also as equally common would be like Job of the Hut or um just other things that sure they have faces, right? Almost all almost all of these, and that's critical, have faces. Mm-hmm. Um I think that's that's something in Star Wars that we get to explore in in the newer um productions. Yeah, regardless of their their point in the timeline, mm-hmm. uh, they do it in their in their video games in their lore. But but like when we go to this TV show or these TV shows, if everyone is just like people in prosthetics, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Like if I wanted that, I'd go watch Star Trek. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> the thing is, it's likely just due to budgetary concerns for the sure, shows. Sure, for the movies, they have a lot more leeway. Right, right. And they have a huge VFX budget. But even even the idea that like Chewbacca does not speak basic, right? Mm. That 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 gets a lot across as far as if you can't do it in in visual representation, you can find a way to to force that idea that like not everyone speaks English. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that does bother me in general about sci-fi movies in space is everyone's right. very human. In Mass Effect, they're unapologetic. Like they're just like you don't understand what they're saying. Yeah. And they they may understand what you're saying because they have a device or something, but they they go out of their way to make it feel foreign, yeah, feel strange, yeah. Um, okay, let's do um, let's do a James Bond movie. So, do you know the rules of like James Bond movies? Are you familiar with like the Broccoli's like hard list of no, like what you can and can't do with? Well, a, let me let me throw something out on left field. Um. This is a prequel, and we might have talked about this before, but uh, about M, when she was an agent. Oh, okay. So set in like the Cold War. Oh, oh, um, that M, not the Voldemort M, but the yeah, the Lady OG, M, yeah, Lady M, uh, Judy Dench, yeah, young Dench, Judy Dench, Dench M. Um, yeah, set in this in the Damn Cold M. War. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be a, a solid movie some good themes to explore there. That's cool. Do you have to lean in on the James Bond franchise? Like you can't just, you don't feel confident in just getting, being able to get away with that. Cause you're doing, you're, you're trying to invoke a time where she's young, right? She's the oldest person there. So you don't have Q, you don't have James Bond. You don't have James Bond villains. You don't have the rival. It's, agencies. I mean, it's it could be agencies. its own thing. I just it, think it has to be its own thing. Like, so why why try to make it part of marketing? <laughs> <laughs> Just titled M, or even Mom. Uh, that would be kind of sick. Yeah. And just at the end, you have like an um, alternate James Bond score. It's it's M in the font, right? But bigger, and so instead of three digits, it's just the three legs of the <laughs> M with the lean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of cool. Who okay, who does the opening theme song? Oh, I don't know. Um uh, Do you like invoke Billie Eilish or are you like not hip enough? <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be an English speaker, preferably an English person. <laughs> 
but can it even be yeah. contemporary it's always contemporary it's like the hottest like uh sing like hopefully english singer at the time who can who can power ballad all right just adele then well we've already done adele uh, do her done again. adele we've done sam smith you don't you don't do it again <laughs> like you gotta go you gotta be on the pulse figure out who it is now i i don't know man that's i'm yeah, not I, on my I, I got nothing. if I, I like I, I hope it would be like actually is jesse J english <laughs> i i have I, no idea well okay if we can't get a spice girl then <laughs> Or maybe all the Spice Girls. Oh, Spice come Girls for, reunion. Yeah, come back for M's theme song. Okay. Do you got a James Bond movie idea? Um, <clears throat> you know, it's just a workplace comedy. <laughs> 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 oh, for a movie, for a movie though. Yeah. Jeez. Um, it's a Q movie. Like what haven't we done with James Bond at this point? We've never know, completely abandoned him. He's never what if had he to... has a child? Have <sighs> we done that yet? No, but like that's not gonna pay out. Why not? It could work. Just like a rando child. Yeah. What if he knew he had a child for a long time? And that's the move. Anyone. That's the move. No, 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 no. Not that he didn't tell anyone because he, like he was protecting her. them, but no, he didn't tell anyone because he was being a dick about it. <laughs> like, like no child support, <laughs> just no. completely written out of the, oh, like no. they see each other every day. <laughs> oh no. Now the idea of a spy with a kid known or not, it's kind of like running to the ground. That was, that's a subplot in Chuck. You saw Chuck, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even Casey had a daughter. Yes. You're right. Yeah, Alex is great. Um, I love that show so much. It's, it's the best show. Oh, favorite show. Um, you know, I've watched seasons one through three five times. I believe it. I believe it's There's six, right? There's five. There's five? And I've seen season four, I think, Oh, no, times. no. Four and five are very short. You know, four is a full season. Four is 22 episodes, I think. Five, five is the short. shortest Five one? is 13. Okay. Um, I've seen five twice, I think. That's a great show. Oh my god, I fucking love that show. So it's oh seasons one through three are so good. Season four is really solid. Okay, it's James Bond and he's not on a mission. The whole movie is completely elective of his own undertaking and he doesn't get anyone involved in it. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a self contained Wait, so what is he Daniel doing? Daniel Craig doing I don't know, taken. It's just okay. some, just something where like there's no one else in but he's not he's not on a mission. It's not a so, sign on anything. So it's taken without an official mission. Yeah, it's completely unsanctioned, but he's just doing James Bond things. Just no budget for it, so he James doesn't have... James Bond unsanctioned. He has to like... Well, I guess he can totally pay for his own transportation. He can. He's, he's pretty... It's implied he's pretty well off. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure as a spy, he gets paid pretty well. But it's one of those movies that takes place over like three days, and it's just... Okay. It's a Mission Impossible movie, right? Because those are always okay. very short timelines. And he's just going out get going at it on his own and the people he meets along the way aren't in any way qualified to like help him at least in the field but like they're necessary for for whatever they're doing what about a james bond mission impossible crossover no i'm no? not on board okay it'd be pretty hard to do i think damn near impossible they're so thematically different but the idea of james bond getting involved in something on his pull, own pull this down a little bit just him getting involved in something on his own but also it being a crossover but you don't market it as a crossover yeah okay like he's just he's he's clearly at odds with like the transporter or something <laughs> okay but he's doing it on his own the transporter <laughs> at that point that's just that oh let's see see it's not james bond without the james bond like ensemble without the support system because then it's just a jason true. Bourne movie true it's literally a jason Bourne movie. okay so switching gears obviously zombie land has come out recently what What's about a one? zombie movie zombie movies i mean we already have Shaun of the dead and that's a perfect like i have movie with i have zombies. one this is one that i came up with years ago um is it a workplace comedy no well not really um the logline goes something like an aging action movie star gets one last chance at glory in the real life zombie apocalypse. 
so it's just an uh, ash. Sure. I mean, it could even straight be him. Something, yeah. Um, that might be the best way to do that. And he or she, in my mind, it was a she, but you know, it could be anything. Okay, it's Sigourney Weaver just going off. Yeah. On zombies. Yeah, she's like, you know, I wish I would have been able to do one more action movie. But it's a. Uh, but then she finds herself in the middle of the zombie apocalypse and gets, you know. What was the end of the world movie? Oh, um, this is the end. This is the end. So it's this is the end, but it's zombies and it's Sigourney Weaver. And yeah. It's not comedians. It's Sigourney Weaver and like. Mm, what did she do? And, and no, 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 it's Sigourney Weaver and the cast of Holes. Holes? Yeah. I don't think I've seen that one. Shia LaBeouf, Corbin Blue. No. <laughs> oh no. It's the it's the book, the Lewis Sacker book. I you have no idea what it. I'm talking about. No, oh, that that would have been like the name sounds better familiar, for but you I don't think I've seen it. Then like the entire screenwriting class. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just go read holes. Well, also, and then the <laughs> twist, the final twist in this movie, at the very end, is that when she's in or he or whoever the main character is in like the final confrontation, they're like at this line of Marines and like everyone's dead. And they're like the last person, and there's a whole wave of zombies coming at them, and they're like Cox and M249 machine gun. And then we like zoom out from her. I'm gonna say her because in my head it's her. Um, we zoom out from her and we see like a camera crew behind her, and it turns out she got one last action movie. <laughs> <laughs> the whole movie has been a movie inside a movie, but is it just like one long take? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like literally like we're zooming out, like drone okay, zooming okay, out. Okay, so my follow-up questions for you are, have you seen all of the Resident Evil movies? No. Have you seen any of them? No. Okay, and then lastly, did you finally go and see Bowfinger? No. <sighs> this is those movies put together. <laughs> okay, I can see that. And and I want it to happen. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be a pretty fun movie. It'd be a solid like $10 million budget movie. Do you remember what I'm talking about when I reference Bowfinger? I do vaguely remember. Um, Steve Martin directs a movie where the main actor doesn't know he's in a movie. So he goes out of his way to orchestrate all these sci-fi events. Okay. In and around his life. Yeah. He gets increasingly more paranoid. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember you telling me about it. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so do you have a zombie movie concept you can come up with on the fly? Ah. Uh, I, I just think that Shaun of the Dead is so perfect. It is a very good movie. In just the structure of it and even the thematic elements they touch on. Like, what are you going to do to bring life to a zombie movie that isn't in Shaun of the Dead? Um, we had uh, Warm Bodies <laughs> in, in 2012, where it turns out, like, eventually the zombies regain like their humanity mm -hmm. or at least their sentience they don't like physiologically change so they're yeah. still like they're still zombies they're still undead they're still undead 100 percent. but like they're they're people again yeah and the, yeah, but no, that I, happens i like, remember that I remember happens the like movie, overnight. i just never saw it yeah like the twist in that movie was like it all happened overnight or something like that where they all like woke up at the same time okay um that's another I would start there is what I'm saying okay. where all the zombies are like, Oh dang. <laughs> and maybe it's not like the oldest zombies. Cause there, there are some issues with that. You could do like a reverse, <clears throat> like a reverse situation. Kind of like how I am legend did a reverse situation. Oh, you know, no, I got it. You know what I do? I would have, um, the zombie apocalypse has been active for a week. Okay. And at the end of that week, so that there's no like decaying issues with like, like bodies or whatever okay like those zombies that are still kicking that are like almost completely whole like come out of it and and so it's like the the five-year blip <laughs> of marvel but it's like oh shoot it's been seven days <laughs> and wow and like oh and my brother is a zombie or or like my my husband is a zombie hmm. or i'm the zombie <laughs> and and just the world dealing with the like he definitely ate <laughs> this person. Oh wow. Yeah. And I definitely shot all of those. Um they're all they're all dead, dead. Like they're not coming back. But like this is a surviving member of their family who's coming back to see this and 
that's fucked that's, up. There's no way you can do that as a movie. That's like a that's a mini series. Yeah, that's fucked up. Best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And just yeah. arbitrarily, I'm gonna cast Benedict Cumberbatch for all of these. Okay. Just if <laughs> he just voices all the zombies. Yeah, if we needed a voiceover, he just does varying degrees of smog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. Or uh, even the same two actors play all of the zombies. <laughs> wow. And we just like go from household to household and <laughs> see how that's impacting them. Wow. <laughs> that's a book series yeah you can't do that any other way you know, maybe as a comic but you can't actually like produce this that's yeah there's a lot going insane. on there um it's a video game yeah what's another <clears throat> what's another uh genre topic what do you think or are you are you spent i might come up with another one in a minute so this sound this sounds a lot like a like an improv exercise where you just take a current event pretty much yeah and then maybe you commit to it or maybe you just use it as a starting point, um, and then another point I'll bring in um, is that after you've established the scenario you do it again where you just change one detail or and it, it, you do it again but you do it from a different perspective in the same context right you commit to all the details that you added before okay and you just you just do it from another character in this scenario. But um, this happened like maybe maybe like four or five hours ago today. Um, but there was a there was a couple walking across the street, and uh, someone is committed to running a red light, so they're accelerating through it, and they're mm-hmm. going to hit this couple. And then uh, another driver um, also breaks the law <laughs> and makes an illegal turn, and so the cars collide. And the way that the cars spin around each other post collision, they completely miss the two people crossing the street. Wait, this happened. This today? happened today. Like you saw this? No, this happened locally this in Phoenix on like Forty Fourth, and like the headline, of course, was like "Miracle on Forty Fourth Street" because it's like this is like, very <laughs> off, right? like you guys like planned this. Wow. <laughs> no, it was, it was excellent. Um, so I don't actually know if anybody died. Um, if the passengers or the drivers, the people in the cars died, but the people crossing the street got out of it clean. That's amazing. Um, and so maybe we we do this situation where maybe it's a rom com. No, <laughs> maybe it's like um, maybe it's a final destination premise or, okay. or what have you. But my what I really want to commit to is um, uh, how do you say this? One person in all of these pairs, like two people in each car and the two people walking the street die. And then we follow the other three people, the survivors of each party, um, as they process the next, like maybe month or six months. Uh, and we just do it as a drama. Okay. Like there's the resent for the person who broke the law or, or the person who was drunk uh, and the person who survived the crossing the street, maybe maybe they're all related to each other in their own individual dyads, right? Like this is a like husband and wife crossing the street. One of them dies. And so there's a dynamic there, right? And then there's like a, uh, like two family members in one of the cars, um, two siblings maybe. And then there's like a first date <laughs> and, uh, and one of them don't survive in one of the other cars. Hmm. And so it's just all these families kind of dealing with the the aftermath of it. And then the, the news coverage of being the, the guy that um, maybe we roll it back, right? And so there's the couple that survives and just being famous for being the couple that survived that, that situation. And then one of the drivers is like the only one that survived from all of the the four victims in the cars. And then just having that stigma on you um, for the rest of your life, and you just kind of explore that. Hmm. So is this like exploring like how it would be different depending on who survives in the context. Yeah, you're telling you're telling three stories in parallel, and just seeing how like their lives radiate out after this point in time. Okay. 
So it would be scenario. like a like a really slow Spielberg film <laughs> <laughs> with like Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But the 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 move is all of the big bills are the ones that die immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <clears throat> Pulling a, a Z Nation there. I don't know if you if you are Z familiar Nation, with the, the, the show. Who dies in the first episode? The guy from Lost. The, so the I would not have, I would Lost. not have noticed because I didn't watch Lost. Um I did see a good chunk of that first season. The, I was in it for the guy in Alaska. Uh, uh the D DJ DJ Quiet. Yeah. G, DJ Quiet. Because yeah, I love him great. and the new guy. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, I love him. Um, but they had on their poster is the guy from Lost. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, like he's like top <laughs> build cast. He literally dies in the first episode. Um, they're they're also like uh, in, I in so Jersey hard. Girl, where they, they like build like Jennifer Lopez, and then she dies giving birth to the main character. Wow. <laughs> <No>. Okay. <laughs> wow. <coughs> yeah. Wow. I would do that. That's just like the it's the most serious film I'm willing to tackle at the moment. It's just the That's nuts. I'd see like if I were if I were creating the story, I'd say the driver who was running the red mm-hmm. is the one who dies. And then the other car, um the passenger is maybe like crippled. Oh yeah, I like that. Like, like you survive it, but your your life is impacted in a wheelchair, just dramatic. Not like totally gone, but yeah, like yeah, loses all, their all legs. Yeah. Like their ability <clears throat> to use their legs. No, let's go with loses an arm. Okay. Did you hear about that? There was a was a, an NFL player who like lost his arm, like a quarterback lost his arm. No, and then it's the, ironic. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was like his freshman year or something like that. And the, the team was just like, yeah, "Look, we've got you for life. <laughs> like we understand." That. Yeah. Like, you can't give us anything for this, Okay, but. sidebar. Is it possible to make a sports movie that's better than... Um, um, oh, Jesus, I'm losing the name. Uh, the one about the, the kid who gets, like, adopted by the white family. Are you talking about radio? No, no, no. Um, Oh my God! Oh, it wouldn't be. That's not the same movie. This is like 2008 or yeah. something like that. Um, Blindsided. Yes, the Blindsided. The Sandra Bullock movie. Ah, that's bad. Bad. No, like I, I'm gonna get criticized like for this. Good movie. <laughs> no, I'm gonna get criticized for conflating radio and Blindsided. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Blindside. Is it the Blindside or yeah? Blindside? It's, it's the Blindside. Okay. I love that movie. I haven't seen it. I have really? seen radio like eight times. <laughs> so the blind side to me is like the pinnacle of sports movies. I thought you were going to say the pinnacle of Sandra Bullock films and I need to watch that. I'm sure uh, it's good. It's very good. It, it was a touchstone in that year. Yeah. It's, it, I'm yeah. sure it's very good. I'm pretty sure it was nominated for something or other. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just in general, not into sports films. I'm not usually into them either, but this one is really good. Okay, premise. Uh, I don't want to explore it, but just like spitting it out. Uh, okay. An, an esports movie. Okay. About being like a team trying to come together as in an esports contest. Okay. Interesting. And you play it straight. Like it's you hit all the notes. It's just like a varsity blue situation, whatever. Uh-huh. But they're you just not make here a to football play, they're not movie, here to play but football. they're playing. Yeah, Dota. they're literally just playing. Yeah. yeah, like Dota or something. Or league. Yeah. <clears throat> That's great. That's a good idea. Um, who did it? Uh, gamers with a Z, I think is what it was called. It was uh like Jason Mewes is one of the main characters, but he's not like the main character. Um, he's probably the biggest star in that film. Okay. At the time, I think the biggest star now would be Sabrina Carpenter. <laughs> not to be confused with Gamer, the no, no dog no, no. shit the... pile of trash <laughs> starring Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler. <laughs> Gerard Butler is the I was who I wanted to name for my Obi Wan setup um, for Liam Neeson. Oh, but I couldn't okay. remember his name, so I okay. pivoted and I ran into. Jason seems better, but yeah, yeah. But Gerard Butler would be solid. But he was who I was actually thinking. I forgot his name, so I just defaulted to Qui Gon and forgot um, he was already in it. Uh, did you see White House Down? 
No, but that is a franchise now, right? No. It's the Olympus. other one the other one became the franchise. This, this is okay. like one of the biggest tragedies in movie making. That they both came out. They the both came out within like two months of each other. And White House Down, which came out second, is so much better. I didn't see either one. Oh my god. White House Down is a good movie. Just a straight up good movie. Olympus has fallen is fine. But White House Down is a straight up good movie. And Olympus is the one that got the sequels because it came out first and everyone didn't want to see another one. That's fair. Um, Even I, though they're totally different. They're tonally, they're so, they're very different. The The last time that was on my radar, an event like that, was for Michael Bay's Armageddon. Okay. And um, Deep Impact, I think, was the rival movie. Uh, they're both about astronauts flying up to self-destruct a meteor before it hits the planet oh. and they came out like at the same time. Okay. Like, like within a month of each other. I just, I remember it's absurd. I remember watching or seeing the trailer for Olympus is fallen and being like, okay, that'd be kind of fun. And then like a month later I see a trailer for white house down. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> they completely fuck, that's going to no. be a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, they're going to lose sometimes. some money on that movie. It happens. And it does. It really sucks. Cause white house down is a much better movie. Think so? Okay. Olympus, I don't know. Have you seen Olympus? I didn't see any of these, but Olympus I have seen. Very... A, I haven't seen. I have seen a sequence where I think uh, Gerard Butler. It was definitely him. So I saw one of these sequences where he's like helping the president escape the White House. Okay. Specifically. Okay. Um, it, there's a lot of vehicular combat. <laughs> that would have been White House Down. Then I saw White. I saw that scene of White House I Down. I think it's not. It's obviously not Gerard Butler. Because that's Olympus. Wait, with vehicular combat? Yeah, like they're in cars, but they're not like on a chase. They're just like... Are they around driving the, around the lawn? The estate. Yeah, they're driving around the and estate. And there's, <laughs> there's a car with a minigun on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's White House Down. Yeah, so I've seen White House Down. Yeah. I've that, seen part of White House Down. So Olympus is very like serious and like violent versus versus white house down is much more um it seems fun <laughs> yeah it's fun it it's a fun, fun movie i was like it's a weird way to address this topic but i'm here for it i mean you've got um it's the it's the armageddon of these two movies <laughs> yeah um uh what's his name who plays the president one of the few famous black actors <sighs> is it jamie fox yes that's okay. one um he's great he's funny a few famous black actors i mean let's be honest yeah, fine there's only a few that are like household names right uh, Fox, i mean i think Denzel, at, i think at any given point in time samuel L. jackson there's like a handful that a generation identifies with in particular and then we we go out of our way to separate them from who we consider black comedians okay <laughs> <laughs> all right and then that that helps you maintain two lists that you can cite okay it's, it's like an unfortunate practice can you pull out sure um okay what if you were to make a movie for forrest whitaker for forrest whitaker <laughs> uh, i remember when he was a meme you went through like a solid like year and a half of just being a meme. I really liked him in Taken Three. The one where he was a dictator. Oh like yeah, a he... war dictator. That's when he was a meme. Yeah, and he was he's successfully pivoted out of that. Thank God. Um, but he is he is really good in like everything. Taken Three. He's great. He's he's a definitely a presence in that movie. But that movie is has its problems. Yeah, but it's it's one of the reasons I like it. His Forest, his performance. I'd basically want to make a movie around that character. <laughs> you want to go back to the Taken 3 character? Yeah. Played by Forrest. Okay. Just a detective movie, you know? Or a detective show. So just make a procedural. Like a cop show starring Forrest Whitaker. It'd be amazing. <laughs> what is your favorite cop movie? Does The Dark Knight count? I'm going to say yes because my favorite <laughs> cop movie is Batman Begins. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, will man. I will fight and argue I, the, to the bitter end. Okay, I don't remember Batman Begins well enough. Oh, that's that's fair. 
Um, you know, Liam Neeson is in that movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, what are some other cop movies? I'm like, I did just watch one on Netflix, which is really more of a time travel movie than a cop movie. Um, is it time cop? In the Shadow of the Moon. I don't know what that is. It's fine. Is it's it okay. Movie. Yeah. Time travel. Time travel. Basically, you have one character who's going in reverse and one character who's going in the regular direction. It sounds like a Sandra Bullock movie. No, not her. No, maybe like she would do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, you know what? I would argue that... Uh, by the sa- for the same points that I argue that Batman Begins, and I guess that you would argue that The Dark Knight is a cop movie, um, the the next closest in in like Marvel would be uh, be the first Captain America. It's a period piece. It's an art film. It's all fake, right? It's all false. Mm. Um, but if anything is as close to Batman Begins in the MCU, it's probably captain america the first movie you want to know what's really funny in the episode with frank one of the segments we did was comparing the captain america trilogy to the dark knight trilogy <laughs> this, this isn't fair <laughs> <clears throat> oh that's really I, great i will wait to hear that uh-huh. that sounds great yeah that's good um yeah shit does no Never mind. I can't think of another cop movie off the top of my head. Really? I mean, like, I'd recognize him immediately. Um, uh, Every, everything you've pitched is, like, massive production scale action oriented yeah pretty right. much. yeah yeah that's fair i mean i think the zombie movie could be done on a 10 million dollar budget i mean i don't think a zombie movie should exceed a 10 million dollar budget yeah. <laughs> true uh true i think the obi-wan movie also could be relatively modest yeah if it's just a western and you keep it like with locals as in you don't have like all these differently shaped aliens mm-hmm rolling around yeah and we you're pretty much just developing one locale everything's a droid it's right. just a west world <laughs> like it's functionally just a west world but it's in the star wars universe wow that's uh well yeah wow i say that with ignorance i haven't seen Westworld. i haven't seen most world either okay i know the premise but sure I same seen. same I, I haven't actually i'm waiting for it to end fair as i do with like all tv shows that's that's totally fair Hundred percent. I'm fair. so excited to like watch Mr. Robot. In I've six seen months. season one. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't seen anything. After I didn't that. think it would go beyond that. Um, I'm kind of surprised it did. Yeah. Yeah, and so I'm just I'm waiting for it to. Season one was really good. good. That shit hooked me real good. It's pretty. It's a pretty nuts show. You're gonna. You're probably really gonna like it. Yeah. It's. Uh, yeah. Damn. Okay, I want to pitch a, a movie universe of romantic comedies. Okay. Where everyone in the movies, eventually, we visit all of them over however many years it takes for them to <laughs> all find their their significant others. Okay. <laughs> like, we Good almost crossovers. got... Crossovers. Yeah, like, we almost got there if, if you count, like, all of Freddie Prince Jr.'s characters as, like functionally the same person and then all his friends show up in different roles so <laughs> in so, the 90s so what is the avengers of that cinematic universe oh geez it's the first wedding okay it's the first wedding and we revisit like not even the first couple but like the second couple and we realize that like the first couple didn't work out but like it's fine uh, okay right okay. <laughs> yeah 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 like it's it's a super real like ultimately very english movie <laughs> okay <laughs> It's yeah, yeah. Um but we keep it fairly contained, right? Like nobody has a has like an international job that takes them all over the world and we have to deal with all of that nonsense. Okay. But it's also not like it's 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 a big city. 
it's in New York. You're just crammed into each other. Um, but because it's a it's a universe, we're not trying to do like a he's just not that into you where there's like five couples and we give everyone like maybe 15 minutes screen time or um, what's the Christmas one everybody loves? The Christmas uh, one everybody loves. Yeah. I'm not sure. Andrew Lincoln drops cue cards to Kira Knightley. Um, I'm not sure. Ah, oh, jeez. Mr. Bean's in it. <laughs> really? We got yeah, we got Snape. Oh, um, shit, I have no idea. Come on, Liam Neeson's in it. <laughs> wow, he's the son of Bran. He's the father of Bran the Builder. <laughs> wow, that's a uh, one this hell is, of a cast. This is the the big movie. Um, the big movie. I watch this every year. God, well, I can't remember the actual title of this movie. I can Google Christmas movies. Uh, just Andrew Lincoln, Kira Knightley. As much as I love this movie, it's not like a top love five actually. Movie. Love actually, yes, it's a cultural phenomenon. I love actually. Uh, love actually is a story of like a half dozen couples. Um, interacting with even potentially like meeting eight. or reconciling eight yeah oh a few okay fine i know where the other two come from and i don't want to count them but <laughs> okay um, okay over the course of like Frantic leading up to christmas, before christmas yeah it's, in it's London. the full month it's the full month leading yeah. up to yeah uh, so in your universe um i'm fine with it as long as camille nanjiani is in the in the universe we start with Camille Nanjiani. It's actually autobiographical, right? So it's him and Emily <laughs> in the big sick is the first entry into this movie. And then we okay. branch out from here. So he's so retroactively <laughs> added into the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was, so we span like a decade. Right. And so they okay. all kind of know each other. Um, oh, I guess the problem is that I, I propose that the, the Avengers of this movie universe has the first couple not working out <laughs> or they clearly didn't happen hmm. it's fine it's fine we'll go chronologically we'll find a couple before <laughs> what if the avengers is like <clears throat> not not the first wet not one of the weddings maybe we start with a wedding but the bulk of the movie is actually like a group trip yeah, i could do a road trip movie like um like a you know yeah like the they leading, get lost in like the mountains to... or something we take it's a dark. A we take a dark turn. Get or it's lost a funeral. In the mountains. It's a funeral, right? Okay. And it's a funeral. Um, and then because people may not be aware that like the big sick is a true story, and that Emily is fine. She's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's. But we we. I haven't watched the movie. Oh, you haven't way. seen the movie. No. Well, okay. In real life, she's fine. She's one half of the yeah. <laughs> like income. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Um. You you don't you haven't seen the big sick. Do you no. know the premise? I just know that it's based on Kumail and Emily's real uh, life. Kumail and Emily um, meet each other organically during a period of time, during the peak period of time where he's being put through the arranged marriage process. Okay. And then she becomes deathly ill with an unknown um, condition that they are forced to put her into a coma to figure out how they are going to address the situation. But it happens so quickly that despite not really like knowing each other for very long, he is coerced so that the hospital can do their thing. This is the thing that happens in real life. He calls himself like her fiance so that he can be like her acting um, person who signs off on all of the... Okay, and he's in the, the middle things. of an arranged marriage to someone else. Well, no, he's in the process of... In the, well, in the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he hasn't, he's not committed to anything. Not, not there, but right, right. working but, on like, it. That's the point of his life where, he's, where he is... And then overnight, like not, over, not even overnight, like like a couple, like a day later, because it takes them forever to figure out how to contact like her parents mm -hmm. or for anyone to figure out who they are. Um, the parents come in and then he has this awkward, like like the week long coma or however long it is where it's like him interacting with the parents of <laughs> this girl. And they have no idea who he is. Hmm. Um, and they're trying to like keep him out of all of it because like, this is their daughter and this is just some guy she was fucking maybe. And and him trying to earn like their respect. Okay. 
and this is the bulk of the movie but then she wakes up and that's not the end of the movie that's the third act and she's just like i don't even know you <laughs> wow like thank you for like going through all of this but i'm just gonna like hang out at my parents for a little bit and at that point like he knows he's in love with this girl he Uh loves her family and like they love him (laughs) and wow and they love their daughter but she's just like he's just this guy that i've been fooling around with and and then they have to it's like many movies put together that already exist but this happened in real life and that's crazy and instead of Sandra Bullock or Julia Roberts, like it's it's the same woman. Huh. Wow, that's crazy. So you have a film that robust as the opening. As the opening of, of okay. your movie, and then you just you can do whatever you want. Yeah. I'm I'm fascinated with connected universes sure. in general. I think there's well, so like much. like what are you tracking? How many connected universes are there's you not aware many. of? You know, there's like there's a good there's, there's a good number. There's Marvel, there's DC, there's sure. Tom Clancy, there's so so notably the first two are forced universes, right? They exist, and to produce in them, you have to play by their rules. And mm-hmm. then in Tom Clancy, like w- loosely, like it's very like, loose. One it's creator, loose. yeah, is just like he gives his blessing. It's fine. Like, what else? Do you well, have? he's dead. Yeah, yeah, but like his estate's like yeah, you can keep making these movies. Yeah, isn't there another Jack? Jack Ryan, Ryan? Yeah. yeah, coming up soon. It's a show, yeah, on Amazon. That's cool. They did two seasons so far, I think. I've <laughs> seen season one. I haven't seen season two yet. Um, uh, there's a lot of missed potential in Tom Clancy, in my sure. opinion. He's got like, you know, Rainbow Six and Splinter Cell and mm-hmm. Ghost Recon, and they all exist in the same universe. But like they never really interact with each other that much, except for End War. But that was never that was only books and a game that was like a strategy game. And it's not, you know. Where do you draw the line for a shared universe versus just a franchise? If there are different, um, independent, like clearly independent things that connect to each other. Sure, like we have like the elaborate heist of Ant Man exists in the same universe as like the the political thriller of Winter Soldier, but yeah. it's the same universe. Exactly. So, okay. Okay. So like with with uh, Tom Clancy, you have this sort of espionage fueled Splinter Cell universe, and the same as like Rainbow Six counterterrorism, and the same as like Ghost Recon, um, um, sort of future tech like pushing the boundaries of what soldiers can be. Um, and then you have individual characters like Jack Ryan and um, there's a few others that oh, whose names are um, escape me, but they're all like relatively independent, but they all do exist in the same universe. I hate to think the that it's true that my perception that the, majority of shared universes are action franchises yeah when that shouldn't be the case right like it's an action franchise is one of the hardest things to produce and that's the one with the most shared universes like like an office workplace should be the easiest thing to like figure out right yeah it would be the easiest easiest to figure but at the same time it's um at the same time, I think you get more payoff with the shared universe in an action context. Like in all revenue streams, sure. But yeah. for the, just the sake of establishing a shared universe, like there's got to be easier things. Like you you bring it down one level, right? You go to TV and you have like the same thing. Mm-hmm. But there's also like, uh, what do I want to use? Like, uh, let's go with Vampire Diaries and the the werewolves oh there is um that's a shared universe right there is um on nbc the chicago shared universe oh that's right yeah all of them come together that's right like like once every like four years yeah chicago i I mean i've never watched any of it but but yeah those are all connected okay yeah that's like that exists yeah um arguably that's also action procedurals (laughs) yeah cop procedural drama procedural it's actually a lot of drama drama yeah that's it's mostly drama 
it, it's inherently drama. So like that's what I'm going for for like a shared universe. Yeah, there right. should be more. There should be more, and like they're sort of out there. Like there are comedic franchises that that will decide eventually to merge to become the same shared universe. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's happened. I mean, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I'm sure it has. What's happened. coming up now? That's secretly. Like like acknowledged but not openly part of a shared universe. Like the Kick Ass films and the Kingsman films are in a shared universe. No, they aren't. Yeah, they are. Totally really? Are. Yeah, yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. Wait, what? Uh, who's in charge of those? It's Mark and the JRs. Is that right? So Miller did the books. And then at the end of every one of those series, is, like he acknowledges that they all like are part of the same universe, but the books are being produced independently of the movies and on different timetables. And of course, the books wrapped sooner than they were able to produce the movies. So when the movies got the pass for that, they're like, "Holy crap! Let's see, uh, do we conflict at all?" And they're like, "No, like Kick Ass could totally live in Kingsman. It's the same, also visual styling. So why not? Yeah, same director too, I think. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me." Um, I haven't seen the Kingsman films. No, right? no, no, no. So I saw the first one, um, because you told me to to watch it. Oh but I haven't God. seen the other. If there are two more, there's one there's, more. A third one is coming it's out. Coming though. out. Okay, so I'm not as. It's far either this thought. year or next year. I thought there were like four. Dude, Kingsman <clears throat> is. Oh, I fucking love Kingsman. Yeah, it's one and, of my and I love Kickass. <laughs> I love Kick- Kickass. Is great too. Men in Black is part of something else, if I remember correctly. Men in Black? Yeah, real talk. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. Matthew Vaughn is the director of That's King's the name. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Could not remember. And Kick Ass, yeah, it's the same guy. I thought mm-hmm. so. Oh, those are such good. Yeah, the ones. editing is the same. Oh my god, the just all of it. Oh, the style. Similar. Oh, and had I known that, I would have seen the Kingsman movies like in theaters in real time. The Kingsman movies, by the way, that's an example of masterful level visual effects. Oh, agree. Yeah, 100%. like straight master level visual effects. That's like as good as it gets. Because there's so much visual effects that are completely invisible. But also communication. <laughs> Just on a very human level. Yeah. Like the director's saying, like, this is what I see in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Can you pull this Yeah, the off? VFX is, is taking his vision and bringing it to life in a way that's, like, smoother and easier to understand. And it, it communicates the, the action to the viewer incredibly efficiently. It's some of the best choreography and visual effects in action filmmaking like that I've ever yeah, it's seen. It's up there with like the matrix and other key yeah. productions. <laughs> I'm not going to name them. Oh man. Uh, the first Kingsman is one of my favorite movies straight up. It's very clever. It's so good. <laughs> oh my you get, God. You got your Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. yeah. You got a, a great cast. You got phenomenal action. The writing is even pretty good. It's not like slouching, you know. It's not super campy. It's campy in the ways that are funny, but like intentionally, you know. Do you think it holds up in ten years? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh my god, that church scene is going to be like memorable well, for. I a mean, long, that church thing time. is like current events right now. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, I love the, <laughs> I love the opening. Honestly, the opening fight scene. What is the opening fight in scene? the bar? Where he mm. takes out the the gangsters with his umbrella. Oh, sure. It's yeah. so good. It's a Jackie Chan fight scene. Oh yeah, like hundred percent. It's a rated Just R Jackie Chan fight scene. Rated R visual effects laden Jackie Chan's fight scene. Oh man, and the music. Oh, it's one of my favorite soundtracks. I I don't remember like appreciating the soundtrack. Oh my god. I'll show it to you after we're done recording it. Oh man. Just like all of it. <laughs> Fuck. No, I, I mean I got like one in particular. 
Uh, anyways, I think we're we're a little over two hours now. Are we two really? hours and seven or something like that. Um, something around that. Yeah, that went by pretty quickly. I do want to say that um, the the visual quality of both honestly Kick-Ass and Kingsman is is so particularly impressive because again these are comic book films mm-hmm. um, but not like most comic book films these are direct ad- adaptations or not even like, they're analogous spins to existing works mm-hmm. and when you are reading a graphic novel you have all the time in the world to try and process what is happening panel to panel page yeah. to page but in a movie and in an audience, in a shared experience, you don't have that luxury, no. and it's very cleanly done. Yeah, in in uh, Michael Vaughn's movies, it's it's really impressive. Yes, they're they're very very good. Like it doesn't have a lot of direct competitors, like the Three Hundred series, or um, mm-hmm. what's the other one, Sin City, right? Those are also like very well done. Yeah. Um, but the the scale that we take um, is so is so much bigger on yeah. the Kingsman series. I will say that King, the first Kingsman movie for me, is like practically a ten. Is that your go-to, like ten? It's 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 up there. It's like that one, like Avengers, first Avengers. Um, <sighs> this is all around a 10 or this is the like basically a 10. 10 well visually yeah no king's 100 percent sure. is a 10 visually music wise the only area that struggles a little bit is in the story a little bit <laughs> i mean it's um but it doesn't it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter we're not here for the story it's of good the it's good enough to carry you through the film and then some and that's all it needs to do. So yeah, that's I'll I'll leave it on that. Kingsman is very very much in my top five movies. Uh, it's basically a ten for me. The Kingsman is part of your future greatest screenwriting. <laughs> oh <my> God, <laughs> if I were to put together a greatest screenwriting, that would actually be an interesting exercise. I, I want to make that the first episode of the next <laughs> season two. I want, to, I want you to commit to something like that. Okay, I can think about that. Or we we could do a we could do a throwback. Maybe not the first episode. Maybe second episode. We'll do it. We can do another one and do a throwback to this. I want to give people a little bit of a break. We we'll just go from one right into it again be a little jarring that's that's fair but uh but that's a good idea that's actually a really good idea all right well i think uh we'll we'll go ahead and sign off here uh you got anything you want to plug last minute uh my name is chris and i'm apparently captioning this episode (laughs) (laughs) not the whole thing just the clips god (laughs) oh that's not bad that's pretty good how long would it, would that realistically take you? It's it's not that big a deal. Really? Yeah. Man. Feels like it'd be very time consuming. <sighs> it's not something I haven't done before. Honestly, okay. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's that, actually kind of easy. I've never done it. Well, we'll uh, we'll talk about that. Um Wait, yeah. when is the next uh when is the start of the first season, presumably? Are you committing to a date here? The start of the second season? Second second season, sorry. Um, we're recording this kind of early, so I don't know if I want to commit to a full date, but it's probably going to be two or three weeks after the old, this episode airs. And this episode airs? Two and a half weeks from now. So I'm like, I'm like okay, happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, a, actually, to a better 2020. <laughs> yeah, we'll be uh, writing up on uh, Thanksgiving yeah, pretty soon. Something like that. A few weeks away. Uh, if you're going to Black Friday, like, you know, make good choices. Yeah. <laughs> season two will air. Oh, that's a good point. Season two will air right around then. I think probably a little after Thanksgiving. If I were to just guess, maybe early December. Yeah, that's fair. 
yeah all right well happy holidays folks <laughs> we'll see you for season two thank you for listening to the season one finale of spy fi after dark i hope you enjoyed the episode as much as i enjoyed making it and if you did consider rating or subscribing on whatever platform you're listening on we'd really appreciate it and while you're at it if you could give us a share on twitter or facebook or instagram we'd really appreciate that as well And again, just as a reminder, there'll be a three-week delay in episodes for season two. It'll be premiering on December 9th. And if you'd like to be notified when that happens, you can find me on Twitter at MillenTweets or on Instagram at MillenGrams. Thank you again for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye.